Today, we're going to watch a Legend Clockwork support replay and learn about rotating during the laning phase, how to know what to do in teamfights, and itemization. And this is all thanks to Hitsuji from my Discord server. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. They were kind enough to share their replay with me and some details about the match. If you want me to review your replay, head over to the Replay Reviews channel in my server, make a post, and maybe I'll make a video going over it. As you mentioned in your post, the laning phase went really well. You guys had a Drow Clockwork versus an offlane Monkey and a Soft Support Pudge. You two should be favored in this lane matchup, the only real potential issue is if one of you, especially Drow, gets hooked into a bad position. As long as you're playing around your creeps so they can tank the hook, this lane should be easy peasy. You even have a lane ward which will help scout which side of the lane Pudge is on. You play the lane really well, running at the enemies with your battery assault at level 1, making space for Drow to last hit. Someone definitely watched my clockwork support video. Pretty quickly after getting level 2, you're able to get both enemies in your cogs, leading to a double kill for Drow. Great play. In your post, you mentioned that you weren't sure if you should help other lanes. The answer here is yes. In this game, you should have helped other lanes, and the reason is because you destroyed your lane, which will free you up to do other things around the map. Let's look at a couple of examples where you could have made some very impactful rotations during the laning phase. First, at 3 minutes, you get hooked by Pudge, you end up running away, and with the help of Drow, you two are even able to kill him. After this, you meander around the lane and get a pull on your range creep from the next wave. Not a bad play, but there was an opportunity for a great rotation here that you might not have noticed. Right after killing Pudge, you could run to get your bounty rune, then contest the 4 minute water rune from Zeus. You see Zeus middle with low mana and an empty bottle, so even though you're low health, you wouldn't be low enough to get killed by Zeus alone. With the help of your sniper, you could even kill Zeus when he goes for the water rune. Making a rotation to the rune would have a higher impact than staying bottom to pull a single range creep. This is especially true since you just killed Pudge so you know he won't be in lane to threaten your carry for a little bit. Additionally, the enemy creeps are all the way by your tower, so Drow can safely farm there while you're gone. Now, let's look at a similar example only a couple minutes later. Pudge gets a hook on Drow, but you two are able to kill him and even Monkey as well. After this, you start to run towards mid, but then decide to return back bottom. This time, I'd say your movement here is not very ideal. Instead, here's what you should have done. Right after these kills, run towards mid to secure the 6 minute power rune. Your mid sniper actually just killed the enemy mid Zeus, and he has a siege creep ready to push. This is the perfect opportunity to sit around sniper and offer any backup if he needs it. It looks like you were about to do just that, but instead you went back bottom, maybe to continue applying pressure to monkey or to ensure Drow's safety. At this point, your lane has gone great, and Drow should be okay to sit here alone versus a monkey. If you're really worried about her safety, place an observer ward somewhere bottom to see if anyone else is trying to make a rotation on her, like Pudge. This way you can feel more comfortable leaving her and making a rotation elsewhere. It's important to consider what your rotations will lead to. Taking the middle tower opens up more of the map than taking the bottom tower. If you take the bottom tower too early, it can actually make it easier for the enemy to catch up and farm that part of the map. This is because the wave can push further towards them, making it safer for them. Overall, your lane obviously went great. Your combined KDAs were 606 and Monkey and Pudges were 270. You definitely focused a lot of your time making sure Drow had a good lane, which isn't bad. But there gets to be a point where the help you offer her has diminishing returns and your time would be better spent helping your other teammates. If you're not sure who to help, just keep tabs on the other lanes and see what the state of them is. Maybe your mid also has a bottle and really wants to secure a rune. Consider rotating to help them with that. Also don't forget that you can make easy rotations with the twin gates. This game specifically, I didn't notice many opportunities for this since your lane was so active, but definitely keep that in mind. Now that we went over the laning phase and recognized some opportunities where you could have rotated to help other lanes, let's take a look at teamfights to help understand things like what your role is, what your team needs of you, and who you should be focusing. We'll also touch on itemization here. Clockwork's skill set makes him a phenomenal initiator, but that's not actually your role to play for your team in this game. Your role instead is to utilize Clockwork's incredible amount of crowd control to split up the fight, and the reason is the draft. The enemy has two cores who like to get on top of their targets, Slark and Monkey King. Your team has two cores who like to stay away from their enemies, Drow and Sniper. And you already have some initiators with Axe and Lion. Also, the enemies have a lot of ways to deal with your hookshot plus power cogs initiation. Pudge can pull someone out with hook, and Slark and Zeus can jump out on their own. Your job instead is to make sure the enemy cores stay away from your cores, and this will mostly be done with power cogs, but occasionally hookshot as well. Some items that help with this type of play are four staff and your Aghanim shard which offers jetpack. The basic idea is this. Use your cogs to either trap an enemy in who's trying to get on your cores, or use cogs to push them away. You can then use Force Staff or Jetpack to get away, but if you're able to use Jetpack, then you'll still have Force ready to save a teammate if needed. This game you went Urn, Force Staff, Drums, then Boots of Bearing. 
This isn't bad, but with the playstyle I just mentioned, I would recommend instead going for a first item force, Agnum Shard, and from there you could get a Glimmer or Halberd for more ways to save your teammates. Now let's look at some brief examples in this game of how you should be looking to play during teamfights. Right idea here by blocking the Slark and pushing him away with Cogs. And again, great Cogs to block Slark from moving on to you and your team. This is great because you trap Monkey in your Cogs, get out quick with Force Staff, and Drow is able to stand there and hit Monkey. You get another nice Cogs on Monkey and Slark, but you guys lost this fight anyway, so it didn't matter. Another similar example, you're able to perfectly utilize your Hookshot to interrupt Monkey from getting his ult off, and you trap him in your Cogs. You use your Force Staff on your Drow, which means you have no escape for yourself. If you have your shard here, you might have been able to fly away after using cogs, saving yourself and your drow. Here you push monkey away with your cogs, separating him from your team, and drow is able to easily take him down. Here monkey is beating on your sniper, but you're able to save him by trapping monkey in your cogs, and you even barely survive with four staff. And that's that. These are all examples of you playing in a way that you should be looking to play every fight. It's a pretty straightforward approach as long as you're conscious of your role you need to be playing for your team. Of course, this doesn't mean that you should never use Hookshot as an initiation tool. If you see a good opportunity, go for it and see what happens. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, great. Either way, it's a learning experience. To help determine how you should play in teamfights, look at both drafts and try to understand how both sides want to play the game. In this case, the enemy cores want to get on top of your team, and your cores want to stay back and deal damage be an annoying obstacle that stands in the enemy's way when they try to make a move. Itemize in a way that helps you play the way you want, in this case saving yourself and teammates with items like Force Staff, Aghanim Shard, and Glimmer Cape. If you enjoyed this type of video, be sure to let me know in the comments. If you want me to review your replay, head over to my Discord server and make a post in the Replay Reviews forum channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.